Welcome to another episode of Terry's Notes. Today we're going to look at an introduction to organic chemistry. Carbon has a valency of 4. It can form covalent bonds with other elements. Carbon atoms can join in such a manner to form straight chains or branch chains. So for example, this is a straight chain molecule. We have butane. We have four carbon atoms joined together in a straight chain. Carbon can also form branch a branch chain molecule. If we look at this example here, we have three carbon atoms in a row. And we have this group being a branch to the main chain. Carbon can also join to form rings. So for example, these six carbon atoms join to form a ring molecule, right? In this case, this is benzene. Carbon atoms can also form single, double, or even triple bonds. So in this case, we have a carbon to carbon single bond. We have one bond here. In this example, we have a carbon to carbon double bond. We have two bonds between the carbon atoms. We can also form a triple bond, in which case we have one, two, three bonds between the carbon. What you need to remember is that carbon is able to form four bonds around itself. Now there are various methods to represent an organic compound. It can be represented by a molecular formula. This shows the actual number of atoms of each element found in one molecule of the compound. We can also represent an organic compound using its empirical formula. This shows the simplest ratio of the atoms of each element found in a compound. We can also draw the structural formula. This shows a two-dimensional picture of the arrangement of the atoms in the molecule. And then we also have the shorthand structural formula. Let's look at some examples. The example we're going to use is butanoic acid. The molecular formula for butanoic acid is C4H8O2. Its empirical formula, as we said, gives you the simplest whole number ratio. So we can write that as C2H4O. And the structural formula is given by this molecule here. Now, if we look at the molecular formula, the molecular formula says that we have four carbon atoms. So we have one, two, three, four, and we have eight hydrogen atoms. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we have two oxygen atoms, one, two. Now there's also a shorthand structural formula. Instead of drawing the displayed formula, we can write a shorthand structural formula. Now, in order to write this, what we do, we break up this molecule. So we have first part, which is CH3. Then we have a CH2. We have another CH2. And then we have this group here which we call the carboxyl group and this is written as COOH. So as you can see this is how we got the shorthand structural formula. If you have the shorthand structural formula it is easy to draw the displayed formula and vice versa. Now an organic compound is made up of two parts. 
it consists of a hydrocarbon part and a functional group. The functional group is what determines the chemical properties of the compound. Organic compounds can be classified into groups called a homologous group. And this homologous group has several properties that you need to know. They all have the same general formula. They have similar chemical properties because they all have the same functional group present and each member differs a molecular formula from the next by CH2. And the physical properties such as melting point, boiling point and density increases along the series. So what we're saying is that, let's say we look at this particular series here. It starts off with CH4, C H6, C3, H8. No, this, is, this is just the first three members of a particular homologous group. Now what we are saying is that as you go down the group, the melting point will increase, the boiling point will increase, and the density also increases. The reason for that is that as you go down the homologous series, the strength of the attractive forces between the molecules increases down the group. And that is why the melting point, boiling point, and density increases. You will also note that there is a change from gas to liquid. to solid as you go down the group. Now when naming organic compounds, you need to remember this. If uh, an organic compound contains one carbon atom, it's going to start with, the prefix is going to be meth. If we have two carbon atoms, it'll be eth. If we have three carbon atoms, it'll be prop. If we have four carbon atoms, it'll be but. And if we have five carbon atoms, it will be pent. You also need to be able to identify functional groups within an organic compound. In the alkene group, we have carbon to carbon single bonds. In the alkene group, the functional group is a carbon to carbon double bond. In the alcohol group, we have the OH group or the hydroxyl group. So this is sometimes called the hydroxyl group. We also have the carboxyl group, which is COOH. So this is sometimes written as CO. O H and then we have the amine group which is an N with two H's attached to it and this is often written in shorthand as NH2. In the case of the alcohol you need to know that it is written as COH or OH so you never write it as this is wrong Okay. You need to be able to explain what a hydrocarbon compound is. A hydrocarbon compound is a compound that contains the elements hydrogen and carbon only. Hence the term hydrocarbon. There are various sources of hydrocarbons. We can get hydrocarbons from natural gas. The main constituent of natural gas is methane. And we can also get hydrocarbons from crude oil. You need to understand what is meant by the term cracking. Cracking is a process by which hydrocarbons in the heavier fractions produced by fractional distillation of crude oil are broken down into lower molecular weight hydrocarbons. 
an alkene is usually one of the products so essentially what we're saying is that you're gonna have I say this was a big hydrocarbon molecule what we're doing is basically breaking up this hydrocarbon into smaller pieces that is essentially what cracking is now there are two ways you can perform cracking we have thermal cracking and catalytic cracking in the case of thermal cracking the long chain hydrocarbon is broken into smaller ones by heating at high temperatures in the case of catalytic cracking the long chain hydrocarbon is broken into smaller ones by heating and using a catalyst and that is why it is called catalytic cracking okay so thermal we use heat only in catalytic cracking we use heat as well as a catalyst this is an example of a cracking process in this case we have pentane pentane has five carbon atoms and when we perform cracking on it we get propane and ethene right notice we have one two three four five carbon atoms on the right hand side and we also have five on the left hand side and as i indicated earlier one of the products of cracking is usually an alkene right and remember i said the functional group present in an alkene is the carbon to carbon double bond Now, crude oil in its raw form, it's of no use to us. Crude oil has to be separated into various fractions. So crude oil can be separated into different fractions by a process called fractional distillation. The principle assumes that each fraction has a different boiling point. Right, so this is essentially the principle behind it. The crude oil is pumped into the bottom of the fractionating column and heated so essentially you're gonna have a huge column you have crude oil enters at the bottom and you're gonna heat the crude oil and what is gonna happen is that you're gonna have different compounds are going to come out at different positions along the column so this is the column and the temperature decreases as you go up the group as you go up the column sorry so the lightest fractions are going to come out at the top so for example you might get compounds with that ranges from C5 to C12, right? And an example could be gasoline. Now, this is a lighter fraction, and gasoline is used in vehicles. And at the bottom, you have heavier fractions. And when we say heavier fractions, we are looking at compounds which have more than probably 30 carbon atoms. So at the bottom, at the bottom of the fractionating column, the residue is going to be bitumen. And bitumen is used for paving roads. And this gives you a brief introduction of organic chemistry.